Yes, please have a seat, detective. Please, please have a seat. Um, sorry. I have a little bit of laryngitis. You're probably wondering why I invited you to my apartment. Well, it's because based on the questions you asked me yesterday, it became clear that you're focusing on this whole metal thing. And honestly, you really shouldn't be focusing on it. Yeah, um, sorry about that. That's the automatic air freshener. I know, it's, it's not supposed to be that loud. I don't know what's wrong with it, but let's get back to what's important. You asked me a few questions yesterday, and I was surprised that you asked me about his medal. Now, I know you're investigating his death because it seems a bit suspicious, but it has nothing to do with that medal or the fact that you can't find any military records regarding his medal. I guess I should have said something yesterday, detective. I'm sorry. Um, well, I mean, technically I didn't lie to you, but I guess withholding information counts as the same thing, right? Okay. Here's the thing. Mr. Fisher, he participated in the Battle of Okinawa, or Okinawa. I'm not 100% sure how it's pronounced. But yeah, he was there. One of the bloodiest, toughest, hard-fought battles of World War II right near the end of the war, ever. He was there, and he got wounded. And well, he never received the medal he should have. I mean, a lot of guys that day received medals, and unfortunately, way too many of them received Purple Hearts. You mentioned that you were a Marine before you became a uh, police officer. Well, you know what a Purple Heart is. That's the medal they give you for getting injured, badly injured. Yeah, you get one of those, that means you've been badly injured and you're lucky to be alive. Well, Mr. Fisher should have gotten one. He never did. He was a neighbor, and he was a friend. He was always friendly towards me. One time I made a mistake asking him about the war. I didn't mean anything by it. I mean, you can tell that I'm older, so I'm not some young kid. It's not as though I asked him, hey, what was your body count? No. I just, I was curious and my curiosity got the better of me. I asked him where he was stationed because apparently when it comes to World War II veterans, there are well, when a World War II veteran puts on his formal 
uniform, apparently based on the ribbons that he has. It signifies very distinctly if he served against the Japanese or if he served in Europe. So I made the mistake of asking if he fought in Europe or Japan. And I could tell that upset him. He didn't say much. Most veterans of that war usually don't say much. And people get confused. They get confused. It's not as though Mr. Fisher and other veterans are ashamed of what they did. They just saw it as something that needed to be done. They did it, and there's no reason to talk about it or emphasize it. And you know what? They're right. There was a threat to America, a direct threat, especially after Pearl Harbor got attacked. Back then, you volunteered, you served your country, you did what needed to be done in order to protect your country, and that was it. You didn't talk about it. it had nothing to do with being ashamed. It needed to be done. It was unpleasant. It was done, plain and simple. No need to talk about it, this and that. Well, like I said, he didn't say much, but he confirmed that he was over there, the Battle of Okinawa, and he confirmed that he was injured. You know what the messed up part was, detective? Apparently, the only reason why he got to keep his leg after that shrapnel hit it is because he happened to be there when the number of casualties, or not casualties, when the number of injured patients, other soldiers coming in, was strangely rather low. Oh, sorry about that. That's the building's freaking electricity. Heck, this place was built in the 1930s. Oh, there's the emergency generator kicking in. Yeah. Anyway, where was I? Oh, yeah. The only reason he didn't lose his leg after that shrapnel hit it is because he happened to be admitted to the field hospital when there were very, very few casualties. It was odd. Had he been admitted a few hours earlier, when there were a lot of casualties, he would have lost that leg. Had he been admitted a few hours after the time he actually was, he probably would have lost the leg. Why? Because when you have tons of casualties, doctors have to prioritize lives over limbs. That means that the guy next to you, who's very slowly bleeding out, and the doctor doesn't have time to save your leg, well, sorry. Fastest way to do things. Uh, cut off your leg, stretch the skin over the stump, stabilize you best they can, and move on to the next injured soldier.
I mean, that is kind of messed up when you stop and think about it, detective. I mean, it's one thing if an enemy soldier puts a couple of rounds into your leg, messes it up so bad that the doctor has to amputate. That's one thing. But imagine being at a field hospital near the front and your leg gets amputated because one too many fellow American soldiers or Marines got admitted at the same time you did. I mean, yeah. Um, th technically, doctor saves your life. He has to cut off your leg. You go back home. And back then it was, well, these things happen. I'm sure the doctor tried to save my leg, but couldn't. And sometimes the horrifying truth is no. No, the doctor didn't try to save your leg because he didn't have time to save your leg. Had he tried to work on your leg or your arm, the soldier next to you would have lost his life. So the easiest thing for the doctor to do was not to save your leg, but to just amputate, stitch you up best he could, all right, next patient. He tries to save your leg, someone loses their life. Now how messed up is that, detective? And the soldier with one leg, he goes back home and he thinks that the army doctor did his best to save his leg. And it never occurs to him that no, the doctor didn't even try at all because he didn't have time. Someone would have died if he had tried to save your leg. Can you imagine that? Technically, losing your leg, not because of an enemy soldier, but because of a badly wounded fellow soldier laying right next to you. Could you imagine that? Well, like I said, he got lucky. He came in during a very odd time when the army doctor had a chance to work on his leg and save it, and he did. But that doctor, he actually told him, hey, you got lucky. If there were a lot more injured soldiers, yeah, I would have had to cut off your leg. You got lucky. I had time to work on your leg. And he told me that he laid there in the hospital bed and he just wanted to jump up and punch that doctor in the face for what he had said to him. But all he could do was just put on a fake smile and say, thanks doc, I appreciate it. Stroke the uh, doctor's ego a bit. Well, after all, the doctor did actually save his leg. But Mr. Fisher, he was a track and field star at school. And like I said, that battle took place right near the end of the war. So when he came home, yeah, his uh, sports scholarship at the college he was supposed to go to, that dried up. Yeah. 
I mean, he had VA benefits, but, uh, well, I've never been in the military. Just, uh, they just don't seem to go very far nowadays, and I seriously doubt they went very far back then. Yeah. So he lost his scholarship, and he was on disability, and he spent his entire life limping. And the pain in his leg, that never really went away. He took so much medicine that most of the time it just made him dizzy, but the pain was horribly unbearable. Ah. Uh, Again with this nonsense. Oh, that time the backup generator kicked in a lot sooner. That's good. That's good. Yeah. Julio really needs to get that fixed, though. People are getting really upset with him. Um, sorry. I forgot you don't know who Julio is. Yeah, he's the building super. Anyway, about the metal... He should have gotten one. He never did. I don't know if it was an oversight or what happened, but it was a miracle that he ended up keeping his leg. A miracle followed up with a lifetime of pain and a lifetime of painkillers that made him a bit dizzy. I mean, it wasn't right. He should have gotten that purple heart, considering how badly messed up his leg was. He was severely injured, but he never did. So where did the purple heart come from that you and your partner found in his apartment? That's what I wanted to talk to you about. You see, the funny thing is, here in America, you can buy military medals and ribbons. Every single one. Every single military medal in the U.S. military, you can buy them. The ribbons, too. Full size, full size. You can buy them, you can own them. It's perfectly legal to do so, except one, the Medal of Honor. Doesn't matter which branch it is. The Medal of Honor is the only medal that it is illegal to buy or sell. Just that one. But it's definitely not illegal for someone to go online and use their PayPal account at a large online Army-Navy surplus shop and purchase a normal size purple heart with accompanying ribbon and the proper presentation box and have it shipped to their apartment. Oh no, that's not what Mr. Fisher did. That's what I did. That's right. You see, I contacted the VA. I contacted a lot of individuals in Uncle Sam's military. He should have gotten that purple heart. He never did. It was a horrible oversight that took place a lifetime ago. So I fixed it. That's right, detective. I fixed it. Me. You might not like that, and I'm not bragging, but it should have been fixed decades ago. No one fixed it. I fixed it. 
as soon as I got that purple heart in the mail, I contacted a lieutenant whom I had met at the VA. Yeah. Yeah. Veteran Affairs Hospital. Yeah. He was local. I spoke with him. Obviously, he still had his old uniform, obviously. And it became very clear that he wouldn't help me. So I put an ad on Craigslist. I found a aspiring actor who was working as a waiter. How stereotypical. But he had access to a current lieutenant's uniform, formal dress uniform. He had access to one. I didn't ask him where he got it. Uh, might have been his brother's, I don't know. But he had one. So I hired him. I hired this young actor to put on a uniform and to present Mr. Fisher with that purple heart. I could tell the man was holding back tears. A couple of weeks later, he expired, gone. I know his death looks as though it might be suspicious, but it might not be. Maybe he did pass away from natural causes. And okay, he had that purple heart for only about two weeks, but an oversight was corrected. I mean, honestly, detective, what are you going to do? Arrest me? No crime was committed. None. But I wanted to tell you the truth so you, you'd stop wasting your time with that medal. It had nothing to do with his death. Yeah. I appreciate that, detective. You have a good one.